Today, I want to introduce you to the artist Charles McGee. Charles was a drawer, a painter, a sculptor. He even painted murals. He was just an all around fantastic artist. He's actually born in South Carolina, but when he was eight, he moved to Detroit, Michigan, and he lived there for the rest of his life. And even up until he passed away, he was living in Detroit. Charles McGee is known for his use of contrast in his artwork. Contrast is like the difference between two things, usually like a stark difference. So as you can see, a lot of his paintings and sculptures, he uses just black and white, which is the highest contrast. He also created works of art that uses some color, but even when he was using colors, he was using lots of complementary colors, so colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, which are like the farthest apart. So even those colors are very contrasting colors. Today we're gonna to be making a relief sculpture similar to this one. So we'll be using black and white patterns and you guessed it, contrast. All right, so we got our paper turned so it is long in front of us and we're going to draw two horizontal lines along the longer side and we're going to be using our paint marker or bingo dauber um, when you're using this make sure we're not squeezing it or shaking it because it will make a big old mess um, now the two lines that you do at the top they don't have to be straight lines they can be kind of wiggly lines but on the lines that we we're about to draw just know one thing all of them have to be cut out, so I would not do anything crazy. So I'm gonna draw my first line. It's a little wiggly, okay? And then I might make my second one maybe a little bit straighter, okay? <laughs> but they're kind of skinny and they are towards the top. Now, after we have these two, we're gonna do um, a bunch of vertical lines in this big white space down here um, to give us some shorter pieces. Again, these can be any kind of direction. They don't have to be straight lines. They can be kind of wiggly, but whatever lines that you draw with your paint marker have to be cut out with scissors. So I would not do a really crazy intricate line because that would be difficult to cut out with the scissors. Now, when you're drawing these uh, vertical lines, they can be kind of parallel or they can touch at the top kind of um, like this one. It's up to you. All right, so once we have this drawn with our paint marker, we're going to add inside of each one of these sections a different pattern. We're gonna be using some Zentangle patterns, which we've done in the past, and I have lots of examples. Um, this is also a great time to talk about the word contrast. So especially in black and white Zentangle patterns, you'll notice that a lot of them have high contrast. So what that means is that some of them have um, heavy areas where black was used, and then some of them do not, even to the point where some things are like just kind of spaced out more and other things are filling up the space. So we could say that even these little dots have a higher contrast than these little raindrops because they're colored in and there's just more of them. So I want you to be thinking about contrast while we are working on our patterns. So we're gonna be working from biggest to smallest. So our bigger patterns will use the paint marker than the regular Sharpie and then the skinny Sharpie. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick a couple of sections from the lines that you created to add some bigger, bolder patterns. So things that you would actually kind of be coloring in or filling in. All right, so I've added um, as much kind of high contrast areas with the paint marker as I felt like I wanted to. And so now everything else that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be working with my um, regular Sharpie. And then if I have tiny details, I will use this one. So I'm gonna be looking at, again, some of these Zentangle pattern examples in case you get stuck, but you can certainly um, come up with some from your head. Um, but I'm gonna be using this marker to do some of those and then work with the skinnier one. 
Now, because we just used the paint marker, if you have areas on your paper that are still kind of wet from uh, the sky, then just be really careful that you don't get like your sleeves or your um, hands touch it because it might smudge. I would just kind of move that part out of the way. So like I can start working on some of these areas that are already dry. Um, and then once I'm done with that, maybe this will be dry and I can start working on that area.